Hello, welcome to Brassic Classics. Um, today, as you can see, I'm sat in an Audi. Um, this is an A6 Estate. Um, it's the Avant model. Um, it's, a, it's a two litre TDI. Um, this actual car has been chipped. And um, yeah, I've got to say, for a car that's got 167,000 miles on it, they, they do hold up well. The build quality, you can really see it in here. I mean, it's got everything you could possibly want on it. You know, I've got kind of like a BMW style I drive, I drive system here. I've got all the phone controls on the steering wheel, I've got stereo controls on here as well. Um, yeah, leather trim, everything. It's really nice. Um, this car, this is a 56 plate, um, which I've just got. And I will class this as a Brassic Classic for the money you can pick these up for. You know, then they're, they're not silly money. Um, I was lucky enough to get this from a friend. He's had the cam belt done, the water pump done. He's just had the clutch replaced. Um, so he's pretty much, you know, in the last sort of year, spent you know virtually what I paid him for the car because um, he's quite meticulous with maintenance and he likes likes things to work and he likes reliability. Um, See, so yeah, anyway. So this thing, as I said, it's been chipped. I think, as I say, I think it's about 170 brake horsepower, but I need to check the paperwork when I get it from him. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it does 40 to 50 miles to the gallon around town and 60 and up anywhere else. So pretty good, really. Um, so yeah, let's go for a drive. I need to go and pick up the other Audi, which is actually Sophia's car, which is the A3. Um, interestingly enough, that is only a 1.2, but it has a turbo on it the size of a dinner plate. So, acceleration-wise, there's not that much difference between this A6 and her A3. You have to excuse the John Lennon style glasses, it's really, really hot, it's a Monday, and it's beautiful weather, so I'm going to need these. Um, yeah. See, this car is, you know, it's, it's given its size and weight, it's, yeah, it's pretty rapid. You know, it's not, it's not going to win any competitions, it's not going to win any races necessarily. But like I say, it's, you know, it's roughly 170 brake horsepower, which is more than enough for me, frankly. Um, yeah, I was, I'm, I was surprised. I was expecting it to be quite a lot quicker than, than the A3. But then I hadn't taken into account, you know, the size and weight ratios. Yeah, this thing is, is huge. I'll show you later on so you can properly see how big this car is with the seats down and everything else. It's a big car, you know, and it, and it weighs a lot and that all makes a difference. Whereas also the A3 is a much lighter, smaller car. So the acceleration between the two, there's not a lot in it, I don't think, to be honest. Having driven both of them quite a lot, there's not a ton, there's not a ton in it. Um, where there is a difference, I think, would be top speeds. Um, the little 1.2 even with the turbo, you know, I mean, it'll do, it's not slow. Yeah, it'll do 90 all day long quite comfortably. But this thing, you know, you put your foot down and it goes and it goes and it keeps going and it keeps going. Yeah, that's where the difference, that's where you feel the difference is that, that top speed. But let's be honest, how often really, you know, how often are you really going to feel that? You know, on everyday roads, you know, with the amount of speed cameras and all the rest of it, I don't really feel that's massive, that's really a massive factor in buying a car anymore. You know, top speed is, is yeah, it is what it is. But for me personally, I think if I had to pick between the two, I'd probably take the A3 
um, over this just because it's compact. This feels like a big car when you drive it. You know, when I first got in this, having got out the Audi, the A3, I could feel the difference in size. It didn't feel as agile. I couldn't nip in and out of gaps you know, in between cars as easily. And yeah, it is a great big estate car and, and there are points where that becomes quite obvious. Um, having said that, it is a lovely, comfortable car. It's got, you know, it really is lovely. Um, I have to also take into account the fact that this is a 2006 car and it has done nearly 170,000 miles. Whereas the, um, the A3, is a 2012 car that's done just under 50,000 miles. So, and, and obviously, you know, it's petrol, it's not a diesel, so it's a bit smoother. Um, yeah, the, the big difference for me when I drive the A3 is it feels tighter. It feels like a newer car. Whether that's purely down to the fact that, you know, it's a newer car, or whether that's down to the fact that, you know, I've driven it more. I mean, this car has sat for a little bit, the A6. My friend who I bought it from has got several cars and he wasn't really using this much, which is why he sold it. Um, now that I'm starting to drive it, it is actually starting to feel quite a lot nicer. I mean, whether that's because I'm getting used to it or whether, obviously, you know, cars that might not be driven. But overall, yeah, I tell you, they're... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I do like the Audis and, and, and you know, from a Brassic Classic point of view, they're not huge money secondhand. Not for I know, I know this is all right. It's a 13-year-old car, but I mean, what has it not got? And if you, you know, do the maintenance that this car's had, it's had a water pump, it's had a clutch, it's had a cam belt. Well, what is there to go wrong? I would feel comfortable taking this to Europe and driving across Europe in it any day, any day of the week. I mean, I've done that in the T25, and um, you know, on paper, that's insane. But if you do the work and you maintain them, they can do this. Um, this car feels tight. It does feel quite nice now. Actually, now it's now I've driven it a few miles. It's warmed up. It it feels a lot nicer than it first did when I first got in it because it hadn't really turned the wheel in three or four weeks. It doesn't help when I pull away in third. But my God, it's hot in here. And I haven't got the air conditioning on because I wanted to, I didn't know how loud that would be. So I hope you appreciate the fact I'm dying. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick road test of the A6. And I've got to say, I'd recommend it. Yeah, unless you're lucky enough like me to have a girlfriend that is quite happy to leave her Audi with you all the time. Um, yeah, if I was looking for an everyday car that I could put my drums in, you know, for gigs and that I could use every day, it's not going to break the bank. This does, as I say, 40 to 60 to the gallon. I can't think of a much better car than this, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. I'll, uh, I will also include in this video, and, uh, I'll also do a drive, have a drive in the A3 to try and compare them and see if you can hear any difference road noise wise. This is quite harsh because it has got 19 inch alloy wheels and low profile tyres that look like they've been painted on. Um, so yeah, you, obviously there's a bit more road noise and there's a little bit, it's a bit firmer. Um, the A3 has got, you know, normal road tyres, well, actually they're winter tyres technically. So they've got a big sidewall and, and yeah, it's, Oh, and also, to be fair, it hasn't done a 660,000 miles, has it? So the suspension components are, you know, are going to be in a bit better condition. It's all, you know, it all adds up, doesn't it? I mean, if I put my foot down now, you see what I mean? It, it goes. Yeah, we're not lacking power. I've got to try and get this round here, which is not going to go that well. Anyway. This is Brassic Classics. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.